China. 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 The factory of the world. The world's most populous country is facing a crisis. China's population is aging. Fertility rates are at an all-time low. Gender imbalance in China. Rapidly rising number of older people in the population. It does not have young people to man its factories or join its army. China is facing a crisis, threatening to end the nation as we know it in the coming few years. China's population crisis has gone from a social worry to a government emergency as the population decline now begins to affect industry and commerce in the Eastern Giant. While many countries struggle with overpopulation, China, the world's most populated country with more than 1.4 billion people, has a different problem. Their population crisis manifests in that the citizens of the Dragon of the East are just not having enough, uh, fun time. Yes, low birth rates are the bane of the nation. And these low birth rates might be what spells doom for the nation. In this video, I will explain, one, how low birth rates became a problem to begin with, and two, the social and economic implications on China as a result. Let's proceed. The rise of China is the biggest event in the recent economic history in the world. So within 30 years, in terms of a growth rate, of total GDP, China has uh, break the uh, record. The biggest jump in GDP since China started keeping quarterly records in 1992. That is a very, very impressive figure. China seems to leave everyone else behind. China's race to become the number one economy, the output of what is now the world's number two economy, is expected to surpass that of the US. The Chinese economy is going to be probably at least twice as big as the US economy. But, believe it or not, China has a population problem. The number of babies being born is going down. China's population is aging. Seniors over 65 will make up a full third of the nation's population. Well, we are about to witness a demographic crisis in China. The seeds of China's present destruction began as a very different issue decades ago. In the late 1900s, China found itself facing a giant problem on its hands, overpopulation. The way the population was growing versus the agricultural output coming out of late 1900s China meant that such levels of population growth were simply unsustainable. In a bid to avoid hunger rampage across the nation, China decided to implement a very drastic set of policies, the most widely known being the one-child policy. Under this policy, families were limited to having only one child. The goal was that by limiting the number of children in every family to one, it would lead to fewer mouths to feed, and ultimately a more balanced population. This worked wonders, as the birth rate plummeted heavily over the decades that followed, so much so that it not only achieved its intended targets, but it then created a culture that has led China into the depths of despair that it is now in. But what the CCP didn't realize was that they were creating a problem for the future generation. You see, because of the one-child policy, theoretically, every couple or two people are only leaving behind one child, which is not enough to replace themselves. That's why the replacement birth rate is considered around 2.1 kids. Two kids to replace each of the parents and 0.1 for any unfortunate child deaths. Since the one-child policy didn't take this into account, it was just too powerful at slowing down the population growth. Talk about too effective of a solution. As a result of reduced birth rates, part of the problem with China's population is that it's aging out. As most of the population is approaching, or is in, retirement age, this creates quite the complex. Low birth rates and an aging population? <laughs> Yikes. Let's look at the problems that come from that. Problems that are leading China into its destruction in the modern day. The ruling Communist Party says it is scrapping a strict two-child policy in response to the rapidly rising number of older people in the population. Beijing has enforced birth limits for four decades, but it's now concerned that a demographic crisis could add to pressure on its economy. China's population grew by only 480,000 last year. That was the lowest in 60 years. 
In absolute numbers, there are 33 million more men than women in China today. The gender imbalance in China is most severe in rural farmlands. For those who engineered the single child policy, the gender imbalance has been the worst unintended consequence. The first social problem that can be easily identified as one takes a walk in the streets of China is that, as a result of the one-child policy, It began in 1908. Only one child allowed. Decades of families without brothers or sisters. These harsh measures did reduce the number of births. Decades, right, for the population to rebound. A symbolic example of state control. The one-child policy. The one-child policy. The one-child policy. China has an extreme gender imbalance as the nation has far more males than females. This formed as a result of parents favoring having male children to carry on the family name and bloodline over having female children. Practiced over generations, it seems that the effects are now in full bloom as China has over 37 million more males than women. As simple as this sounds, this creates a whole host of social and cultural issues that affect the nation heavily. To begin with, China has a problem of bare branches, especially in rural China. This is a Chinese term for men who are single and are unlikely to find a wife in the future. As their presence in the rural landscape has grown, bare branches have increasingly attracted the concern of China's policymakers. In January of 2007, the Central Committee and State Council issued a report saying that the imbalance in the marriage market amounted to a hidden danger for society and will affect social stability. The government's anxiety over the surplus men is more or less buttressed by a growing body of research linking marginalized men to the likely spread of violent crimes, prostitution, sexually transmitted infections, and the trafficking of women. Several studies have drawn a connection between the historical outbreaks of peasant rebellions in China and surplus males. As we all know, the CCP is not a big fan of rebellion of any kind, so this creates a problem for them. Adding to the social problems that are being caused by China's population crisis, you will find that the gender imbalance is creating a high competition in marriage for the few females available. Chinese matchmakers always have more men than women which means a lot of men go unmarried into old age. This further creates a disproportion in the birth rate, and it has also resulted in the thriving of online communities where young men spend money on females to find closure and comfort. This activity contributes to the collapse of Chinese morality and tradition in society. Consider this. China's population grew to 1.41 billion in the decade ending in 2020, its lowest rate of growth since imposing a strict one-child-per-family policy in the 1980s. The National Bureau of Statistics announced that China added 72 million people between 2010 and 2020, an increase of 5.38%, with annual growth averaging 0.53%. As these statistics show, the population crisis in China is only getting worse. Where it becomes an economic problem is that a good portion of China's active workforce is aging, but there aren't enough youngsters to replace them in jobs all over the nation. This creates vacancies in key sectors all over the country, and because there's no manpower, economic growth slows down. As you can imagine, this is the last thing that China wants as it fights to surpass the U.S. definitively in several metrics. The sector that has been affected the most by this labor shortage has been the manufacturing industry, as there is not enough manpower to man the industries in comparison to the past. On the other hand, certain analysts have argued that there's not so much a universal labor shortage as there is a mismatch in labor. The younger generation is shying away from manual jobs like farming and industrial work, which makes up a significant part of the economy. This, therefore, leaves a gaping hole in the labor pool, leading to the same problem, vacancies and slow economic growth. But labor shortages aren't the full scope of the problems that come with China's population aging problem. Other factors exist that are equally as puzzling to solve for the government. The reality of the situation, confirmed by the results of China's most recent census, 
shows that the silver generation is China's fastest growing demographic. This demographic of senior people accounts for one third of the country's purchasing, a fact that merchants and retailers are becoming aware of and factoring for. With growing spending power, more leisure time, and longer life expectancy, Chinese seniors are becoming a consumer group to be reckoned with, given their growing will to live their golden years to the fullest, and taking into consideration how nuanced this huge cohort is, brands can create and communicate their products and services properly. China's population of people over 60 years old surpassed 254 million in 2019, accounting for 18.1% of the total population. No other country in the world faces such a significant demographic change. According to the National Bureau of Statistics, China's aging population will reach 330 million by 2030, accounting for one-fourth of the overall population. What this means in economic terms is that there will be a whole portion of China's population that will be retired and not actively contributing to the growth of the economy. Analysts have stated that the demographic dependency ratio, which is a measure of the dependence on a society's total working population, would go from 47% in 2019 to 96% in 2050. What this means is that in the not-so-distant future for China, for every retiree, there will be only one person working. This will undoubtedly put pressure on China's economy, as there will be a strain to take care of the retired population. Extra burdens will be placed on the benefits and the healthcare system, resulting in increased costs all around. Current estimates state that in 2027, retirement funds will peak at 7 trillion yuan, but then go to zero by 2035, due to the number of dependents increasing. As a result, a notable deficit will be felt between its inflows and expenses, monetary-wise, and by 2050, the deficit will be in the trillions of yuans. The difficulties in maintaining the liquidity of the pension system are forcing the government to take extreme measures, like attempting to encourage more births and increasing the retirement age. But it might all be a little too late at this point. The government is not oblivious to the problems being faced in China. In fact, the CCP, realizing the trouble that China is in, has long since instituted a two-child policy. In May 2021, the Chinese government announced it would scrap that policy in favor of a three-child policy, allowing couples to have three children to try and increase the declining birth rates. This followed 2020, where the birth rate fell 15% to record a dismal 10 million births. In addition, China has started to try and address the low manpower problem by moving towards technological trends and trying to use technology and innovation to supplement the industrial sector. Basically, China is trying to transition the economy from being labor-intensive to a technological one. But it's key to note that the industrial sector constitutes 38% of the overall economy. And until full automation, the labor shortages will be felt in the present moment and for many years to come. These measures, at this point, just seem like desperate attempts to resolve a problem that is now far more than skin deep. After generations of the one-child policy, there are now facets of the Chinese economy that are so deeply ingrained that it will take decades to reverse the effects. The question, much like what comes first, the chicken or the egg, is what will come first? The destruction of China or the rebirth of the nation?